In today's What Matters report, right now there are about 1.2 million people diagnosed with HIV AIDS in the U.S. More than half are African Americans, but even more mind-blowing is this. In Dallas, Texas alone, seven out of ten women who are diagnosed with HIV are African American. In our continuing series, Breaking the Silence, we are talking today about HIV AIDS and what you can do to stop this staggering number. Also, we're going to break down some misconceptions about this potentially deadly outbreak throughout the next several minutes. We are going to share a toll-free number on the screen so you can find out where you can get tested for free. It can not only save your life, also save a sister, a mother, a friend. That number is 800-CDC-4636. Again, one 800 232 Four six three six. Joining us now from Dallas is Miss Plus America 2011, Michelle Anderson. Michelle is HIV positive. So brave that you're joining us, Michelle. Thank you. Appreciate this. Also joining us is Marsha Jones. Marsha is the executive director of an AIDS prevention center in Dallas. I want to thank you both again for joining me. Michelle, I want to start with you. You became an advocate for this important issue. It is so key. Um, tell us when you were diagnosed and how you found out. I was diagnosed in April 11th of 1999, and it was during the time where I had made some decisions in my life that landed me in a drug rehab. And initially, I just went in to take the, the test just to get out of the group. I never really, um, I never really uh, mm -hmm. thought of having HIV because it wasn't a, I, you know, then it was a white gay man's disease, so I didn't associate with it. And so I just went in to take the test just to get out of the group. And, um, back then, they did a drug uh, blood draw, and uh, they came back two weeks later, and I found out I was HIV positive. Though she didn't tell me at that time, she just said it didn't look good. And she left the room and never came back. Did you believe it at first when you heard it? Did you think, oh, this could happen to me, or did you just think this happens to other people? I thought that this couldn't happen to me, this happened to other people, that I didn't fit that profile, and that... Um, it was just, it was devastating. I just could not understand how a woman, a black woman, could be HIV positive at that time. And Marsha, when I heard the numbers here in Dallas, I really thought it was a misprint here, that there can't be so many women contracting HIV. And what do you think this is, and what do you think the stigmas are connected to HIV? Well, I think the stigmas connected with HIV are still the same that uh, when people are diagnosed with HIV, um, it tends to be a blot against their personal lifestyle. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, perhaps maybe a woman is a sex worker or perhaps maybe a woman is perceived to be promiscuous. Nobody never think twice about the fact that the woman just very well may be having sex with her husband or with her primary partner mm -hmm. who don't know his status because we're not talking enough about black men who are heterosexual men, who are HIV positive, who, who don't know their status, who could possibly be infecting the women that they're sleeping with. So I think that those stigmas, that, that, that those are the stigmas that's attached to it, and women don't want to be attached with that negative connotation of who their character is. Marsha, it seemed like we heard a lot about HIV and AIDS back in the 90s. It was prevalent. A lot of celebrities were talking about it. And now it seemed to kind of slip away, and people aren't talking about it as much. But obviously, men and women are contracting this. Why do you think that it's not in the forefront anymore? And what can we do to bring it back? I think it's not in the forefront anymore because it's great. You know, the greatest thing that could have happened with HIV in the mm -hmm. 90s was that we received cocktail drugs. We received drugs that could put this disease at bay. People could live productive lives. They could go on about, you know, seemingly going on about their lives. But at the, back, at the end of the day, they really were not, you know, still suffering with some different things. So people felt like, oh, this is good. This, is, this disease is manageable now. Everything is okay. But we were still not talking to those individuals who were at most risk for becoming infected with HIV. Mm -hmm. And as we see now, mainly women who have sex with men, uh -huh. Because nobody is, there's no messages. We changed right. the message. See, and, in the 90s, mm -hmm. we were very specific to uh, men that have sex with men. Right. Now, the message is not that specific to women, especially black women. We've got to change the message. Right, and when Magic Johnson came out in the 90s and said, I'm suffering with HIV, and now he seems to be living a healthy life, that is certainly a positive thing. Michelle, I do want to end with you. What have you done in terms of spreading the message and helping others? Uh, the I am a co-chair for the campaign in AIDS Texas Southwest. Um, I also sit on 
two boards, ADAP Advocacy yeah, Association. Uh, I'm a lead peer educator for the Affiliate <laughs> Center. Mm -hmm. And right now I'm working on a, a program called Living Positively Positive. Mm -hmm. And what it, what that is is to re, I train HIV positive men and women to become peer educators. Michelle Anderson, and you just coming on this program, I'm telling you, you're helping so many people. You're a brave woman. We wish you well. Michelle Anderson, Marsha Jones, thank you both. Thank you. Now, What Matters is a partnership with Essence Magazine. It gives us the chance to look at issues in the African-American community that affect us all. You can grab the latest edition with Whitney Houston. She's on the cover. Pick up the latest issue or head to Essence.com.